Hey guys, welcome to The Secret History, living in your aquarium. Uh, I wanted to show you, first off, that my uh, beautiful plecos, uh, these long fin super reds, which they're not really, these are just albinos, but luckily enough, one is a female, one is a male, uh, and they are about a year and a half old now, and they produced babies. I saw two babies they're somewhere in here, so at least there was a brood of some sort. Uh, on another note, uh, the green dragon plecos that are long, that with the long tail, they're also um, getting bigger, and check this out, check out their color. So, some of them have, well, I'll get this guy before he runs, some of them have this dark, dark greenish gray with a light uh, kind of... Uh, cream to just almost pure white tip on their tail whereas others have uh let's see if we can get a side view on this guy he's a little skittish but others have more of an actual green uh like as the name insinuates green dragon uh and then the other color pattern which is the best one i think uh, see if we can see it through here at all is it's actually green it's a nice green with very bold cream uh, or white tips on the fins and very long very long fins so they're just kind of come on kind of fun to watch if if I can startle them and they just very flowy um, so very cool also, I've kind of cleared out a lot of the underbrush in here, and what I had in here, amongst a ton of other things, uh, as all this stuff has grown up, was, if you recall, I had some baddis. So I put some uh, scarlet baddis in here, and those baddis, uh, the babies were raised up in here, and the... Uh, breeding went on over in that tank. Pardon the mess. I feel like there's a fog over the lens. Hold on one moment, people, viewers. That's better. All right. So, so far, I've just been kind of taking account of who's here um, and which fish are in here. There's so many Corydoras uh, in here, the uh, Panda Corys, that... I just keep pulling them out, and there's just more and more. It's like one of those scarf tricks that a clown does or a mime does where they're, like, pulling the the scarf out of their mouth or whatever. Uh, another thing that is kind of cool about the tank right now is that there are tons of shrimp. I wasn't sure if they were breeding in here. I only saw a few, and when I started to move things around, boy golly almighty were there a ton of baby shrimp um, living in, all, in amongst this substrate and rocks. So rock piles are another really good thing. Uh, as I said, they were in the first place. Also, don't know what these are. They're not ram's horn snails. They've kind of got just a rounded... Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of a conical shape to them, um, but they're not ram's horn snails. And then they kind of have like a rabbit snail head with the two different antennas or eyeballs. Uh, I don't know what they are, um, feelers. And so I don't know what those are, but I like them, and I noticed them just now. So what else is going on in here? There are a lot of... Uh, uh, there's some wild-type uh, endlers in here. Also, my uh, my tetras, my red-eyed lemon tetras, love them. They're in here still. And then there's all sorts of danios, CPDs, erythromicrons, all sorts of stuff like that. The pandagaras uh, with the glare on its face and the, the poop on his head from this guy. Uh, <laughs> poor guy. Uh, but in any case, I'm just keeping an eye out for more of the... Corydora pandas and more of the baddest. All right. So as I keep an open mind and eyes for that, I'm thinking that I want to open this tank up for uh, a whole bunch of half beaks. 
that's my thought anyhow. Um, let's see if we can find where the half beaks are. It, just looking down, you can see shrimp right away. So, boom. All right. Half beaks. Oh, I see one. So, here's one right here. They're just cool looking. They're kind of fun. And right now, I've got this as a very swampy tank. Very slow. I mean, it's clean water, but very slow. And it's aerated. But dripping just down the algae as slow as I could actually rig it to go. This is kind of just a babbling brook. And then there are also some airlines that run uh, to either corner of the tank. So it has lots of air, but no surface agitation except for right over here. All right, so in contrast, over here is where we raised the... Uh, the uh, beautiful little badass. And if if badass with an I isn't your speed, try it with an A because these guys are pretty cool. Um, this tank, as you probably know, is a, a panda loach tank. Love these guys. They're um, on the uh, endangered watch list, but I think they are probably gonna be on the list officially in that they're only in one river system two forks of the same river and they're being uh fished pretty extensively for the hobby apparently um and there's no other living relatives of their uh species subgroup basically that is doing very well up there rather than down about a thousand miles south there are some but yeah, so they're not they're not doing the best, and I just think that uh, trying to get these guys to breed is a top priority. If uh, if you can see them for sale and you think you can take care of them, give it a go. These guys have made it um, a long way this time. Some of these now are pushing two years. This is a female, definitely with her full belly, um, and you can tell them apart. As I've said in other videos, that the the females have. Uh, boring facial markings uh, relative to the males. Uh, there's a female back here. Let's see if we can even get her. Um, pretty, she just has black and white stripes, like three or four on her, with a nose that's white. Whereas the snake skin pattern on the face is what the males have. And they've kind of got smaller... Um, smaller bellies uh and then they have uh more i don't know what you'd call it but paddle like uh paddle like fins uh up up front like they kind of walk more on them than the females so over here you've got the females see they've kind of just got little white dots on their face so they're hanging out same with here there's females on the glass all right so other than that what do we have going on here? We have Lucas Brett's uh, Blue Dream Shrimp. Uh, they are the bluest Blue Dream line in the world, according to him. And I think he's pretty correct on uh, they breed very, very true. Um, they've been in here a little while, uh, two and a half years, I suppose. And they have been here since before the Panda Loaches. And they were here when we just had the baddest. So what we did, if you recall, was we had some baddest in here, and uh, I couldn't get them to breed. I tried a lot of different things, and I read a lot of different things. Now let's try to agitate the the tank water a little bit so we can maybe find some of these baddest. So we'll use my little turkey baster. Um, so basically, what what ended up happening was. I got sneaker mails every single time I tried to get a group of baddies together that I thought could try breeding. Every time I'd get sneaker mails that just never, never showed their true colors. They looked just like females. There was no way to tell the difference. And I just, I was frustrated. Um, couldn't figure out which ones were males, which ones were females. Uh, and there was one male that colored up, obviously, and he's right here, and he's all 
proud and uh, he'll he'll become more colorful even uh, as time goes on but this little baddis scarlet baddis they're from uh, the India and Bangladesh border regions um, he'll get bluer underneath his fins there on his uh, pectoral fins and then the stripes become more prominent so we know he is a male for sure um, with those stripes like that a female will be gray and they will not have any uh any color to them at all usually they don't have stripes either but sometimes they will and a lot of times you'll see one of these fish with no uh color whatsoever no blue or or red to them but they do have like gray and dark gray stripes and that's when you know that it it's probably a, a male that is hiding. It's a subversive male. It's uh, dressed up to be, uh, don't tase me, bro. Don't fight. I don't. I don't want to fight. And then at the last minute, what happens is the the males and females of the baddest actually go through quite a mating process. Uh, they chase each other around the tank. The male and female both kind of have their own sections of the tank, their own regions, and they kind of swoon each other and go on these dates. And uh, the male will come by, uh, and f several female will take a look at him. And uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, he'll pick one, they chase each other around. She goes back to his place, he goes back to hers. And then what he does is he builds like a nice little nest, like something kind of cute. And in this, uh, that's dug out and it's got maybe a little ring of rocks around it, maybe made out of sand. Maybe it's just bits of, uh, some wasser tongue or something, uh, around it. And so he kind of adorns it like cribs or like, uh, other cichlids would do, um, even though they're not a cichlid at all. And they're actually cyprinids, so pretty far off from cichlids evolutionarily. But he, he sets up his little den that's similar to that or similar to, I don't know, a blue jay or a crow or a magpie. They like shiny things and they decorate their nest. He decorates it. They do the, the back and forth, the like, no, you stop hitting me. Stop, stop, stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Or, or that you hang up first. No, you hang up first. You know, those kind of little uh, juvenile dating games. That's basically what they do uh, in fish world. And the female will make a run for the male once he pisses her off thoroughly. And he'll go back to his nest at that point. And she'll follow him right over there and then go in. And then he'll do a quick double back and kind of trap her in there and then woo her and, you know, dim the lights or whatever. If she accepts, she will lay her eggs, and they will be fertilized, ta-da. Uh, and then the most difficult part next is they can't eat them. No one else in the tank can eat them. And the eggs are so teeny. They are, how teeny are they? They are smaller, you know, smaller than uh, brine shrimp eggs, smaller than anything that we can see here. Any of these little floaty dots of... Uh, food or broken crumbs that you see on the glass or in there way smaller than that so they are teeny tiny little eggs and so they're not going to get eaten particularly but the babies from those eggs are considered larval stage and they actually are uh quite tasty and they look very similar to brine shrimp they're smaller than brine shrimp and the parents seem to uh, pretty much just eat those, like, right off the bat. And the parents, even though they're little, little teeny baddest fish, uh, they, they rip things up. They definitely haul through uh, shrimp populations and, uh, you know, copepods, daphnia, all sorts of things like that. So why did I put them back in here? Well, the answer is pretty easy. I needed to find the males. And in the other tank, it was so big that they had their own ranges. And some of them showed off, but most of them did neither. They just kind of hung out. And one male was very obviously the alpha and ran back and forth the whole tank. And it's actually this guy right here, I believe. 
and the others you couldn't tell the difference so putting them in here where they're hunting my blue dream shrimp which pains me so badly and i'm talking a matter of hours at this point is how long i'll let them be in here i think but they've turned bright colors also just kind of surprising them into a brand new environment uh that kind of gives them a new lease on life and then they decide uh to mate and things like that now if if they do mate check out these little teeny baby uh shrimp that are in here i'm really worried and i pretty much know the answer but yeah they're probably going to eat all of those uh in here which is a super bummer but hopefully I can identify again the true females and the male. Uh, I'll probably have a, be able to pick. There's five in here already. And I think there were eight that grew to adulthood and survived the, the last litter plus the five adults. So there's still a lot back in the other tank. But that will allow me to ID these uh these allow them to spawn and ideally i'll spawn them in this five gallon tank which then there'll be no fish in once they're in there so what you do you, because it's so hard to tell if they spawned i mean you wait to make sure that they're doing their mating dances and they're spawning and they're chasing each other and they're turning bright colors but other than that you can't tell the eggs are so teeny um, unless you have like you know completely empty tank or something which is hard to get them to breed in uh, they're so teeny that you don't know they laid them and the larval stage will be a month or a month and a half of their life and then they need daphnia copepods all sorts of uh, little teeny bits of food and protein morsels of that that are in the water like plankton and um you know even things like hydra and planaria eggs and stuff like that they will be eating other things like that as well as will these loaches i love these panda loaches as you know they're one of my favorites now the panda loaches get along totally fine with the baby shrimp that's a baby blue shrimp right next to the panda loach it could fit in its mouth and it could chow down anytime on that little baby shrimp and it doesn't it doesn't uh he's actually touching him right now uh and it uh, you know he he flickered away um so because of that the little blue shrimp are not very flighty yet and i'm a little worried about that uh i hope they still will get that instinct once they start getting eaten tonight so i'm just kind of down here watching and thought i'd share with you the experience uh i haven't really seen many of the the scarlet baddest uh we'll see we see that male that's very clearly a male but the other ones that all look like females as of uh right now uh they're just hanging tight and uh no signs of their true colors uh yet and hopefully it doesn't take eating all my shrimp to figure out who is who uh, and also, they just, I mean, they're just mean. They they just eat the heck out of their own babies and stuff. So, wow, look at how blue that shrimp is. That is a nice, nice shrimp from Lucas Bretts right there. LRBAquatics.com. Uh, these are from the line that I've been working on trying to get more uh, Blue Dream uh, Reelys or Rileys out of. And uh, I'll try to catch her. Well, now she's gone. But really, I've been getting these splits in color this generation where we get the clearness in the center slightly. And I think if I selectively grab just the right ones, uh, we'll be able to make something happen. Like here's a little baby one here. That one's going to just be a lighter blue probably. That size and bigger will probably survive, like this guy right here. And I apologize that the tank's dirty. It's a shrimp tank. Come on, get over it. Uh, other than that, the only key thing to any of these things, uh, breeding, surviving, and you being able to sell them for a profit and, you know, keep everybody 
uh, multiplying all all three critters is that uh, you need to have enough hiding spots for them. So you can see how overgrown the Sawasertang is. You can see how much uh, film and biofilm and al algae there algae there is on the glass and things like that. And uh, that's all by design uh, so that these little guys can have uh, food. All right, guys. Well, looks like uh, we're not going to get the show that I had hoped for uh, in finding some female uh, baddies in here. They have hit the deck pretty, pretty solid, it looks like. Uh, but... We do have the Blue Dreams and the Panda Loaches, which are always lovely to look at. And, uh, yeah, we'll check back in soon. I'll let you guys know how, how it turns out. Um, they're also kind of, the, the Panda Loaches are starting to eat the Planaria, I've noticed. Um, don't know what spurred the, the change, but now they're actually actively hunting, so that's good. Uh, I think feeding them a little less is, is a good idea. So no more blood worms for you guys. When I found out you could be my little vacuum cleaners all this time and you're just slacking on me. I mean, come on. What the heck? So that's what's going down here. Uh, take care of yourself. Take care of your pets, the people around you, your fish, your plants, and, uh, you know, just pass on that love, pass on that care. And uh, if you really like the channel and love and care about the channel and these critters, you can always hop on Patreon and uh, help support me as a creator and all the critters in my care. You can also uh, check out some t-shirt designs and things like that that I have online. And uh, you can also... Uh, Go to uh, PayPal uh, if you want to make a donation that sort of way uh, or one of those super chats live. Uh, here's a bunch of those uh, panda corridors from across the Wii. And uh, other than that, that's that's my bagging. Yeah. Oh, oh, like and subscribe. That's the free way you can help. So, yeah. All right. Now all my, my bagging and pandering has been done. And... Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Take care. Talk to you next time.